This is a little guitar amplifier that we built out of a late 50s symphonic record player amplifier. We just pulled the amplifier out of the record player. The record player was completely shot. It went into the dumpster. And then we pulled this little amplifier, little tube amp amplifier out of the record player and converted it into a guitar amplifier. It's got a 12SQ7 preamp tube, a 50L6 output tube, and a 35Z5 rectifier tube. Uh, those speakers we did somebody gave us uh, like the, it was like a home one of those home theater system speakers and we we pulled those out of there and st stuck it in this cabinet uh you know it, it didn't really sound that good it but it's it's kind of a kind of a novelty this this cabinet is actually another it's from another record player somebody gave us and we just cut it was just the cabinet so we just cut the hole big enough to fit those speakers in there it's got a little tweeter and again this this thing it just does not we'll, we'll test it in a minute I, as I recall it does not sound that great do you remember Leroy? No, don't. you don't remember? Don't. we um, had this piece of metal we made like a u-shaped chassis and mounted the the actual chassis from the record player in inside of this chassis you know we had to cut the hole for the speaker output the pilot light the on off switch fuse it's got this is the volume and tone i think we'll test that in a minute and then the input here Like I said, this this cabinet is just just another old record player cabinet. We we just got the cabinet, so we cut this out, uh, and it's still open, so you can see the you can access the you know, speakers and the tubes if you need to. But I mean, you can you could access it from the back too. But uh, it's just kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if you can see in there. You probably can't see that. I'll I'll post a picture. Um, I didn't really do too much to this thing except I changed the filter capacitors because it was humming humming really bad. But anyway, that's that. And uh, as I said, I I just had this piece of metal. It was actually part of a refrigerator. Or something some stainless steel from a refrigerator and man it is tough and hard to work with so I, I basically just made a big like a big U and then mounted the the chassis from the record player I think it, did I say this it was a symphonic yes. a symphonic record player from the 50s late 50s yes. uh, that you know I've got a I've got one of those metal bending tools but that that right there it was just hard to work with. I have to say it was pretty hard. Cutting the cutting the holes for everything and bending it, it was it was pretty difficult. I probably would not do that again. Maybe use aluminum or something. But I, I've got a whole bunch of this stuff. I maybe I just need to I don't know. Get some better tools. Cut cutting it. Cutting, cutting it was the hardest part. So I've got one of those cheap cutters from Harbor Freight, and it, it worked good for about the first cut, and then after that, it was basically, it'd be almost easier just to use a hack, hacksaw. Because that thing did not cut very good. Right? Yeah. I don't think I ever actually found the exact schematic for this thing but 
I did find th this. This is from 1957. It's a Phonola. And it had the exact same tubes. And this, the circuit was was pretty pretty close. Pretty much the same. You know, it's, it had the... Uh, it had the uh, 12 SQ7, 50 L6, and the 35 Z5. And, you know, it just comes in the input through the volume control into the grid of the SQ7, 12 SQ7, out of the plate into the grid of the 50 L6 into the output transformer it's a single uh, half halfway replicate replication so I recall this thing kind of humming but we'll see we'll try it out here in just a second no. these little if you can find one of these little record players they they make a pretty fun little project, little fun little tube amplifier project. They're I mean they're a pretty simple circuit as you can see, and uh, you know it sounds okay. It just it's not going to blow your doors off or anything, but it, it it makes a fun project. We we were going to cover this this box in total X. But we ended up just paint, just painting it. It's it's a really pretty heavy duty plywood box. So I don't know. Some someday I might actually put a maybe a little bit better amplifier in here. With a pretty good speaker because it's it's pretty. You know it's pretty it's fairly deep. So you could put a good speaker in that thing and have a actually have a pretty nice amplifier. But uh, right now this thing it's just it works. Uh, but I, you know, it, it's not the greatest thing in the world. All right, so we plugged it in and had a little bit of a malfunction. It uh, blew the fuse. So let's see what happens. We now we've got it plugged into the my current limiter. So let's see what happens here. Turn this on. Let's put this on watts. All right, let's say, put it on amps. So nothing. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, current limiter is on, so that means there's a short. Got a short somewhere. Oh. Yeah, it's a dead short. Did I do something to it when I opened it up? Let's let's dig into it. See if I mean there's nothing much to this thing, so let's dig into it and see what we can figure out. Okay, now I, I uh, took the, the outside cover off. I'm not really sure why I put that on there. I think at one time I had I had like a U-shaped thing and I could not get everything in there. Uh -huh everything mounted in there easily so I cut that I cut that and you can see all the trouble I was having cutting this, this stuff it was it was a nightmare so I've got that off and uh, let's give it a shot again turn try to turn the power on I'm gonna put it on amp let's see what happens I'm, I just I'm thinking maybe maybe that piece of metal Maybe it's possibly shorting out against something, but I don't know what. Let's try it again. Ready? Yeah. Nope, still. Current limiter is still shorting out. There's like a dead short here someplace. Uh, this this thing some, something's grounding out I when I remove the ground wire 
I had installed a three wire ground cord and when I removed the ground wire it no longer is shorting out so something I think that it's something to do with see that bare wire inside the I think something there is shorting out I must have I must have cut I must have cut the uh, wire see that bare wire right in there I don't know if you can see that or not this is one of the very first things I ever built and you know I probably would I would not do that again I had I had that zip tied up to that thing right there that's that's precarious there and then I you know I didn't have a very good soldering iron back in those days so you kind of see those whiskers some whiskers hanging off of there and you know some of the solder connections don't seem to be very like this don't do this <laughs> I think I just I think I was just at that back in those days I was just using parts from other things that I, that I would find see I obviously pulled that off of a circuit board and stuck it in here you know I mean that's fine if you're just testing something but probably should go back and put an actual part with leads there and not have that flapping in the wind in fact that's loose that might be the problem that's loose right there look at that I have to figure out where that goes I'm gonna I'm going to look into this and clean up some of these solder joints and fix this up so I'll be back in a minute okay this is a little bit different schematic that this had pulled loose and I think it looks like I don't know if you can see that that looks like that was there it looks like it was just a cold solder joint not connected very good when you make a solder joint you should have a good mechanical connection and then the solder just holds the mechanic mechanical connection in place it looks like I just laid that on top of that and soldered it don't don't do that note to self don't do that like I said this is one of the first things I ever built and uh, you know I was just so excited to have a tube amplifier so I'm gonna I'm going to solder that back there and I'm just gonna I'm going to leave this I'm going to leave this in here you know this thing I, did, I don't ever play it it just really really just for fun it was just a project for fun just to see if I could do it so I'm going to solder that back in there clean up some of these solder connections the ones with the fix those whiskers and then see if it still works And while I'm thinking about it, you know, you should get yourself a good soldering station. This thing, this is, I got this on uh, probably Amazon or eBay. Something like this is what you need. Um, it'll get hot enough and you can turn, you can turn the heat down if you are working on like a real sensitive circuit, circuit board. Um, when I was originally working on this amplifier, I just had one of those cheap, just a really cheap soldering, soldering iron, and it wouldn't get hot enough to melt the solder on some of these joints that have multiple components connected. So, you know, this is this is only like thirty dollars, I think, on Amazon. Get something like this. This is a Zenny, but there's there's a lot there's a lot of these things out there. Just get something like this. Well, I took this thing out of the cabinet and I've got it up on the bench here. There was a couple of loose solder connections and I cleaned up some of the wirings, wiring and re rerouted some of the wires. So now... So yeah, now it's uh, it's working. And actually I got this through, running through my shop speaker and... It, doesn't sound too bad. 
That's volume. I'm not sure why that clicks off like that. Is that? Actually, that's volume. And that's tone. Yeah. So that, that has some effect. So, um... Let me put this on a tripod or something. Actually, I'm, I'm just going to set this down on my bench here and strum a few chords through it. You know, it doesn't sound half bad through the shop speaker. That and it's a I got a 12 inch Fender, a 12 inch Fender speaker here in a really nice cabinet. through the shop speaker so so let me uh, stick it back in the cabinet and, and wire it up to these cheesy little home theater speakers and see how it sounds you know one thing I like to do is run the speakers to a jack on the chassis instead of hardwiring it to the chassis that way you can you can test different different speakers different cabinets and things like that so I've got that back in the cabinet let's give it a shot That's how it sounds with the uh, cheesy little cheesy little uh, home theater speakers, and that really, it really, to tell you the truth, it sucks. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Compared to the shop speaker, not very much volume. I mean, that's cranked. Is it? Is it all the way up here? Yeah, I mean, it's all the way up, volume-wise, tone control's down. Whose idea was it to use these speakers, Leroy? Yours. No, I think it was yours. <laughs> Kevin, let's use these speakers for Marty. I, I seem to recall that. Okay, let's try the shop speaker again. And that, again, that's a reason, that's a good reason to, to... To not hardwire your speakers into your chassis that way you can try different cabinets and things yeah see that's like 10 times louder uh, maybe uh, maybe 20 times louder project is going to be put one of those Alnico speakers from that fender cabinet in in this thing because it I mean that actually sounds not too bad for what it is I mean it's just a little three tube amplifier but it sounds pretty good with a decent speaker yeah you know so uh, maybe in a future video when we have some extra time and energy we'll put that speaker one of those Alnico speakers in this thing and make this actually a usable amp. The way it is now, it's just it look it looks kind of cool and cute, but it does not sound very good. So that's it for now. Yeah.